Okay guys, things are getting serious. How about 700 horsepower small block Ford combos? Let's check them out. In this video, we're gonna take a look at five different combinations, all that make over 700 horsepower. Now there's one combination I did want to include here because we have a naturally aspirated combination that makes over 700. We have two nitrous combinations of different displacement, both that make over 700. And I have two turbocharged combinations, again, different displacements, both that make over 700 horsepower. But one of the combinations I did want to include, but I couldn't unfortunately, was a Paxton supercharged 331 inch stroker. And the reason that I wanted to include it is because we actually used a production five liter block and that combination made 775 horsepower. Now, I didn't make a bunch of runs at that level, but we did exceed 775 horsepower with that Paxton supercharged stroker with a production block and did not split the block. But let's take a look at our other combos that I do have all the dyno results for. Let's check them out. To get things started on our 700 horsepower small lock board combinations, we have a complete disaster. <laughs> So how do we consider a small block Ford that makes over 750 horsepower naturally aspirated a disaster? Well, it's not a total disaster, but this thing could have been so much more. There's so much more potential left in this thing. So this was a 427 inch dart short block. Well, it was a dart block. It was a 4125 bore and a four inch stroke. It had all forged internals. And the thing that we, the reason that we expected this thing to make so much power is it had a lot of good things going for it, not the least of which was a set of Edelbrock Victor E heads. And they were CNC ported. I mean, these things were 280 cc, so they were big ports, but they flowed 390 CFM on the intake and 300 on the exhaust. We had titanium valves in these things. We had, you know, a 215 intake valve on it. They were uh, Faria um, titanium valves. We had, uh, the heads were set up with triple springs, you know, 320 on the seat, 800, more than 800 open. So this was a solid roller deal. We put a big solid roller cam in this thing from Comp Cams. It was a 272, 280 at 50. It was their HXL series. It was 110 degree lobe separation angle. It was over 700 lift. It was about 725 after you corrected for the lash. Um, we had a Wilson ported Super Victor intake manifold on, although it was designed for a 4150 carburetor. We ran a 4150 to 4500 adapter on it and then a Jones SS1 dominator carburetor although the dominator was only a 750 it was the same carburetor i ran on my engine master's motor which i'll be doing a, a video on that later on <laughs> on my tales of woe i mean i was a finalist though that worked out okay but um there were some big problems with that engine masters uh, challenge deal so I'll, I'll, I'll do a video on that it was kind of a fun adventure and i got to meet a lot of cool guys like kazi and it, you know it's cool to hang out with those guys but our 427 was a 13 to 1 had these big ported heads um, the big problem we had with this combination was actually that I tried to run a set of inexpensive uh, shaft rockers and we could just never get the geometry right. We kept actually ended up breaking the um, adjuster nuts on these rockers and stuff and I just didn't spend the time or I didn't have the money to put a real T and D or Jessel shaft rocker system like this thing deserved. I mean this thing had enough flow to make you know over 800 horsepower and it certainly had the possibility to do that but this combination <laughs> even with all of this made 700 and what we 753 horsepower torque was at 616 foot pounds and if you do the math um this thing should have been a lot more i mean it has the airflow it has the displacement um this thing should have been you know, maybe not at um, maybe not at two horsepower per cubic inch, but it should have been up in the you know certainly one seven or one eight uh, possibly. And the the specific torque output was not very high in this combination given the compression and stuff. So there's a lot more potential here. Let's get to the rest of our 700 horsepower combos. 700 horsepower combination number two was actually another stroker, but much smaller. It was a 363 inch stroker, so it was an eight two deck combination. It was a 4125 bore and the 3.4 inch stroke. It was a Dart SHP motor or an SHP short block. But we had um, a set of uh, Dart Pro 1 225 CNC heads. We had a fairly healthy roller camshaft in it. It was a 725 lift, 254, 260 degree duration, and a funnel web intake 
950 Holly inch and seven eighths actually to two inch step headers because the Dart Pro One um, requires it has a different um, exhaust bolt pattern for the headers than most conventional small blocks do. This was a flat top motor, um, you know, ran really good. This thing made 500 and this was in our 500 horsepower combination. Uh, made 565 horsepower and 487 foot pounds of torque. But to get it over 700, obviously, we, you know, <laughs> put a power adder on it. And in this case, we added nitrous. We added a 74 nitrous jet and a 64 fuel jet. Uh, this was a, I think it was a Nitrous Express kit, but it, you can get, was, get this with just about anybody. Um, this thing made 748 horsepower, although the spike was way up there at 775. But um, this is, uh, the, after the thing stabilizes, it's kind of a more accurate uh, measurement. So easy 700 horsepower. You take a 550, 560 horsepower NA motor, which you can easily get with that 363 or even a 393. Um, you know, any of those kinds of combinations and then add nitrous to it. Good things happen over 700 horsepower. 700 horsepower combination number three should be familiar for you guys that have watched any of these other videos. This is actually a 327 inch stroker stock five liter block with a 3.25 inch stroker crank. It's a low compression combination, had four draws and forged pistons in it. It also had a set of Edelbrock ASCAS Victor Jr. heads. It had a mild extreme energy 266 camshaft in it, RPM air gap and a Holly and headers. It made 392 horsepower and 386 foot-pounds. And here's what happened after we installed a single 66 millimeter uh, whole set turbo on it. And we were blowing through the carburetor with a, a Vortec carb bonnet. So we ran this thing at a little under 13 pounds, 12.8 pounds uh, to be exact. This combination produced 761 horsepower and 766 foot-pounds of torque. And I think that on these tests, we ran these quite a while back with the um, Jimmy and Nathan, my guys from HP Performance, was very cool for them to come out and help with all this stuff. But when we ran this combination, I think we were getting near the limit of the turbo. We definitely had a decreasing boost curve, and that might have been a function of back pressure and our manual wastegate controller because they didn't have an electronic one at the time. But we didn't seem to be able to get too much more power out of this combination on this whole set turbo. But this was a good combination, you know, easy 750 horsepower with a fairly mild 327. You certainly could do this also with a 302. Let's get to our next combo. To reach 700 horsepower on our next combination, we combined displacement and a power adder. In this case, it was nitrous. We built a 418 inch Stroker 351 Windsor base motor, which is a 4030 bore on the 351 Windsor uh, hydraulic roller block and a 4.1 inch stroke on the crank. It was a stroker crank, a seal one. We had forged internals in this thing. Now I don't like the 4.1 inch crank. I would rather stay with a four inch crank, much like the LS stuff, especially with a stock sleeve length. It tends to bring the piston down out of the bottom of the hole and um, reduces ring seal and stuff and you get flutter and I, it's just not as a good idea but we were looking for lots of displacement and, and obviously displacement does add power in this case we ran this thing was over 11 to 1 we ran a set of Edelbrock uh, Victor Jr. heads and a matching Victor Jr. intake manifold we ran a Holly or actually a, a this is back when we were running Demon carburetors we ran a 950 Demon on it a set of inch and three quarter long tube headers, MSD distributor. It had roller rockers on it. And it also had a comp uh, extreme energy street roller camshaft at 286. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here for this thing. But we managed to make over 600 horsepower with this combination. And it did really well, which would be a really fun car to, to have or a really fun motor to have in your five liter Mustang in a lightweight like notchback or something. But this thing made 602 horsepower. And torque was good too at 558 foot pounds. But here's how we pushed it over the 700 horsepower mark. Naturally, we added nitrous to it. Here's our first shot. Uh, this was, I think, a hundred shot, but it pushed it up. Oh, we made almost 125 horsepower. It actually made 725. 
And um, because we were over 700 horsepower and we had more jading for our nitro setup, we added more nitrous to it and made even more power. Push thing up, this thing up over 750 at 784, and it just goes to show you how much power you can ha have with nitrous and how easy it is, as long as everything is right, as long as we retarded the timing on these kits um, four degrees for the first one, and then we took away another two for the next nitrous hit. Make sure the air fuel is right, make sure the timing is right. You make lots of power with nitrous, especially on when you start with something that's already making 600 horsepower. Good stroker, good nitrous. Power. Our final 700 horsepower combination was a fuel injected stroker 8.2 deck, you know, 302 base motor. It was a 331, so we combined a 4030 bore with a 3.25 inch stroke. It was a low compression one, less than 9 to 1. It had an Extreme Energy 274 cam in it. It had a set of Trick Flow twisted wedge heads that were ported by the guys at Total Engine Airflow. These came back when Brian Tooley was uh, <laughs> owned the place, so this was way back. It had a ported Systemax, extrude hone ported Systemax intake manifold on it, a 75 millimeter throttle body. It had 50 pound injectors, and it did have forged internals. It had a forged uh, stroker crank and 5.4 inch rods and forged Pro pistons from back in the day. We ran a single turbo on this. And we ran our, our stroker and actually aspirated. It produced 448 horsepower and 443 foot-pounds of torque. So it did fairly well. The ported heads really obviously showed their worth here. Um, we had, and uh, we probably should have put maybe a little bit more camshaft in this combination, but the uh, I think the heads kind of made up for it. But here's what happened when we installed our power adder single turbo kit from the guys at HP Performance. And we had, this one was a 72 millimeter turbo. It was a Turbonetics piece. We had a fairly consistent boost curve on this combination. And this thing spooled up fairly fast. So we had, we had basically full boost, although I started the turbo run at 4,000 RPM. We could have started it a lot lower than that. We had full boost there on the load, which was nice. So we had a good um, solid torque curve, good power run with the turbo. This thing made 722 or three horsepower and 714 foot-pounds of torque. So it did well, as you see, it's pretty easy to make 700 horsepower, put together a good, any kind of small block forward combination, add boost to it, and if it doesn't make as much power NA, then you just have to add a little more boost. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do you think about all of our 700 horsepower combinations? Again, I wish I could have included that Paxton Supercharged Zeal, and I wish that everything would have went <laughs> perfect on our NA427 combination that made over 700 horsepower. The reality is I needed to spend some more money and actually have a shaft rocker system on that combination, but I didn't have the money. We tried to make do, and we made a couple of runs, and it made okay power, but there was a lot of power left in that combination if I had everything that I needed, everything that should be on that combination now with the turbo stuff that's fairly easy put together a reasonable combination that makes fairly good power and then just start adding boost and obviously good things will happen now with the nitro stuff it's a little bit harder because you want to make more power NA before you add the nitrous because you can't take a 500 horsepower combination and add 500 horsepower with the nitrous or at least I haven't been able to do that successfully maybe you guys if you have let me know in the comments <laughs> I'm Richard Holder. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. In the next video, I think I'm going to combine the 800, 900, and 1000 horsepower combinations because basically I'm running out of combinations for all of these power levels. So I will combine all of those in the next video. Then we'll be all done with our horsepower combinations for the small block Ford. Let's check it out.